A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, if Christ is preached as raised from the dead, how can some among you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? If the dead are not raised, neither has Christ been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is in vain. You are still in your sins. Then those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are the most pitiable people of all. But now Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I don't think that any of us here would argue against the resurrection of Jesus Christ, or the resurrection of the dead, or the life of the world to come. As such a fundamental aspect of our faith, the resurrection is something that we must hold to be true in order to pursue the Lord through this life that we share as Dominican friars and as Catholics. I do believe, though, that despite our commitment and consecration, we can still be tempted to view ourselves and our lives in a way that doesn't require the resurrection to be true for our lives to have value. We do good, fi- we do good things for the people around us. We teach, we console, and we help people in need. Even if someone doesn't believe in God, they can still clearly see that our lives have value, right? This school of thought is the same that says that all religions are essentially the same thing. They give us moral codes to stand by, and they help us thrive as a human society and to love each other. But when we start to view our lives and our religion this way, we begin to make an idol out of this life here on earth. It becomes all about what we do during this life, and we forget about eternity. As a friar and as a Catholic, our lives are dedicated and directed to an eternal life with Christ. The fulfillment of our lives is beyond this created world. We can be assured that regardless of how moral we are, how many good acts we do, or how much we love here on earth, we will not and cannot be satisfied by anyone or anything other than our eternal Father. This is what Paul is talking about in this reading. He says that if for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are the most pitiable people of all. Although this may sound like a harsh way of putting it, the whole statement hinges on a single word, only. Paul isn't saying that following Christ is not what's best for us in this life. We know that following him will lead us to great happiness and joy. But this cannot be the only reason that we dedicate our lives to Christ, or the only reason that we act morally and do good works. We follow Christ, who is the eternal King. We follow in his footsteps here on earth, acting as he would, as his hands and feet in our modern world. And if we hold true to his mission and fix our eyes on eternity, When our time on this earth has come to an end, we will also follow him into his heavenly kingdom.